What's up guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a light box. So if you ever want to turn your photos into professional looking shots, whether you're shooting for social media, you're shooting for products, you're shooting your own creation, you're shooting food, any of those things, this can get you there. If you've never heard of a light box, it's basically a, a miniature studio that we would be pumping light into to get light on your subject. And before I dive into the build, I have some exciting news to share with you guys. Today is the official launch of the DIY Creators merch. If you wanna check that out, I have a link down in the video description. We got 12 products to choose from if you wanna support what I do. That'll be greatly appreciated. Allow me to keep doing this and uh, let's get started. To get started, I'm going to set up at the miter saw. This is a simple build. You can use a circular saw and you can also use a miter box with a hand saw. Now of course those two options are going to take a little longer. Once all my pieces are cut to length, I laid them out and made a quick count to make sure I had everything done. And as you see at the top of the screen, those are all the pieces of scrap that I had left over. So this was a pretty efficient cut. To simplify this whole process, I basically made a bunch of frames. And to simplify this, I'm gonna use butt joints and pocket hole screws. I marked the wood so that I knew exactly where I wanted to drill the holes. I looked at multiple options when it comes to making these frames and I thought about half lap joints and I also thought about using dowels, but the pocket hole screws were the easiest to get done. Now one thing to keep in mind, you're not necessarily stuck with using pocket holes. If you have a thing against those, you can use whatever joinery you need to. Now since I was repeating a lot of these, I decided to create a quick jig that I can easily just slam the pieces of wood together and install the pocket hole screws. Now this jig worked out really well and it really kept everything aligned and made it quick for me to just go ahead and focus on securing the pieces of wood together. Once I got the first one done, I just repeated the same process until I was able to duplicate everything else. I ended up with two outside trims, two sides, a top and a back along with the front and this piece that I'm going to attach to the back for structural support. A buddy of mine on Instagram sent me a few of these metal squares and they really come in handy and uh, I'll put a link to that down in the video description and if you're not following me on Instagram go ahead and follow me at more DIY creators. And now it's time to assemble the frames to each other. I'm going to square these up first and then I want to make sure that the sides that the pocket holes are actually facing out. I'll add another piece of trim to cover those. Once I get everything lined up, I install a few brad nails to secure the pieces together. I envision this to be all over the place, so it's not strong enough to just use brad nails, so I do recommend using wood glue to get that tighter, stronger bond. And of course, if you don't mind the aesthetics, you can also use screws. With the two side attached, I'm now going to install the front. And unlike the sides, I want to make sure that the pocket hole screws on the front is facing in. I'm going to align everything and lock the squares in place. Then I'll apply wood glue and secure the front on with brad nails. To wrap this section up, I'm going to run wood glue around the perimeter of the top and then place the top trim in place. And just like the previous steps, I'm going to clamp these together once they're aligned and attach them with brad nails. Since the outer frame is made of 1x2, I did notice that the pocket hole screws I have would actually land on the inside of that frame, which would more than likely be seen through the diffusion fabric. To address this, I'm going to fill in the hole using wood filler that actually dries close to the color of the wood that I'm using. The pocket holes took a good amount of wood filler, so to speed up the drying time, I used the heat gun. I also used wood filler to cover up the holes from the nails. Once the filler dried up, it was time to sand. I sand both sides down as smooth as I could get it. I needed to make sure that this was a flat surface so that the trim can sit flat. I also used the sander to round over the corners and the edge. I marked off a section and then I cut the diffusion fabric now and I'm going to start off with one of the smaller side first. Being that I don't work with fabric that much, I was a little caught up on how should I start, which side should I start on, and I just got tired of wasting time and I just dove in and it's like what's the worst can happen. I took it aside at a time and stapled it on as much as I could until everything looked good. I then went back and trimmed down the excess so that it didn't stick out past the end. I repeated that for both sides and then I made my way to the top. 
Securing the top seemed to be a little more trickier because I had limitations on where I could actually place the staple gun. I did the best I could and finally I got it and I trimmed off the excess. It was actually a good thing I bought an extra piece of lumber because I needed that so that I can attach this front on here. This wasn't part of the plan. Attaching this trim allowed me to hide the loose ends of the fabric. To hide the staples and make this more presentable, I'm going to attach the final piece, the trim. I held the trim in place with clamps to make sure that there were no gaps in between. I then secured that with brad nails. I did not add glue in the occasion I need to replace the fabric in the future. I'll simply remove the trim and replace the fabric. To blend the trim better, I'll use wood filler to fill in the gap. I'll go around once again and make sure that I fill in all the gaps and all the nail heads. At this point, it's pretty much done. In a future video, I will create interchangeable backdrops, photo props, and things so we can get the most from this light box. I thought it was a good idea to show you a quick miniature photo backdrop to get the creative juice flowing. I made this one from scrap wood and recycled pallets. I'm going to use these posts in the back as a way of spacing out the floor for the backdrop. Once I have them all lined up, I'll nail them in place. This one is going to be temporary. Ideally, I want to build one big enough to capture more real estate inside the light box. I'm going to leave the back loose, which make it easy to break down and also interchangeable. This will work well if you want to have a dark floor, white wall, or if you want to mix different material, you can get as creative as you like. The beauty of having a light box is I can be anywhere and all I need is a flat surface to set up. I'm going to use my studio lights. I've had these for about three years now, I've dropped them a thousand times, so they proved to be pretty durable. I'll link those down in the video description. All you need is a light source of any kind that's going to beam some light inside the box. For the backdrop, I'm going to be using some of these poster boards that you can use for projects and things of that nature. And I'm going to use that for backdrops and just give me like a seamless background. In most cases, your goal is to shine light into this box and get light on your entire subject. But it's also great because you can shoot light from one direction depending on the vision and what you want to actually capture. If you're a woodworker, a crafter, maybe you just love to take photos or you want to shoot photos for a website, a product, this is really an essential thing to have so you'll be able to get the best photo possible. Now with this temporary backdrop, it'll give you an idea on what we can actually capture. So I shot a few photos of my lens just to give you an idea how you can make things look like it's in a completely different environment. If you managed to skip the beginning of the video and you made it this far, today we're launching the merch. So if you want to check that out, support the channel. I got a link down in the video description. Now one thing to keep in mind is that I didn't edit any of these photos. They're like right out of the camera. So some of them are probably even bad shots, but I just wanted to get you some idea and perspective on what you can get with a light box. So just remember that all the backgrounds are interchangeable. Basically, you can do whatever you want in here to create a new environment. My initial plan was to leave the back open, but then I decided to change my mind because I wanted to have it in a way that it was ready to go at all times. I'm going to glue on white hardboard here, but you can absolutely attach any material you want. So as a bonus, I'm going to throw in a free cutting list for this project. So if you guys want to make this, the size on this is 32 inch long by 21 inch deep and about 19 inch tall. I'll have that link down in the video description. So this is actually going to be a huge help for me. I've always wanted one of these and I think I'll be able to get exactly what I want. I think it's going to be a great addition to my arsenal because I want to be able to improve every aspect. I'm more like a hobbyist when it comes to shooting photos. So I'm not like 100% invested as a photographer is. So this is probably something like a lot of photographer would be super interested in. And if you are a woodworker or you like to sell your products and you have things cutting boards, knives, things like that that you want to capture and shoot it. I think something like this will work out for you so you can capture your best image and present it to your audience. And that is it for today. If you're new to this channel, I'm Glenn. And be sure to subscribe to DIY Creators for all your do-it-yourself projects. I'll see you next time.